Welcome to the beginner's guide to the Aimlab Creator Studio. Get your creative and building hats on. The Creator Studio is a powerful all-in-one resource for building pretty much anything you can dream of. Add targets and train. The Creator Studio allows for unlimited scenarios and even some fun with physics. If you haven't already downloaded Creator Studio, it's free and included inside of Aimlab. Head over to Steam and join millions of other players creating and training their aim. The Creator Studio is still in beta phase, so some bugs may still occur, but it'll be getting constant updates to add new awesome things. Let's get creating. To access the Creator Studio, first click on the custom tab at the top of the main menu, then click on Creator Studio. Once the menu loads, we'll have a few options. From the main menu, you can create a new from empty map, new from template, you can load a map you've already made, or you can get started with our video guide. Oh wait, you already are. For this video, we're going to be creating a new from empty map. First, we'll create our level. Set the terrain and skybox. Give a name to your creation and set the terrain size. For now, we're going to leave this at the default, which is 250 by 250. Below this, you can drop down to select a different skybox. I'm going to select the skybox golden. It looks kind of calming. Next, let's select our terrain texture. There's a bunch to choose from, but for now, we'll keep the default grass. Click on create level. All right, you'll now be able to see your beautiful 250 squared terrain. And hey, look, it's you. This is the player's start point when you play your level. First, we'll master moving around the 3D space. By holding right click and using WSAD, you'll be able to move around using the fly cam. Next, we'll take a look at the object library. The object library is your holy grail of shapes and prefabs and decorations for you to populate your map with. At the top of the object library, you'll see targets. We'll leave these until we get into building a task. The objects are split up into categories, including shapes, buildings and structures, decorative and interactables. For this example, I'll open shapes, then click on stationary. Here you'll see a list of primitives which can be dropped into the map. Either click on the thumbnail next to the name of the shape and drag it into the map, or click at the bottom where it says drag and drop. We won't judge you which way you throw your shapes into the map. Some objects have their central point through the middle, so you might need to use the axis arrow to lift it up after placing. Feel free to check through the drop downs and play around dragging items onto the map. Next we'll check out the tools which will allow you to modify nearly every object inside of Creator Studio. Along the bottom of Creator Studio you've got some object modifier tools. These tools let you move, change shape and scale objects. The first tool is called Smart Movement. As the name suggests, it's pretty smart, probably more so than me. When you use this tool, objects will automatically align and rotate themselves onto another surface. Shortcuts will help you speed up creating, so tapping S on the keyboard will activate Smart Movement. Object axis movement will allow you to move objects over the X, Y, Z space. Basically forwards, backwards, left, right, up and down. You just click on the arrows and drag in the direction that you want the item to be. You'll also notice little cube faces at the center of an object. Dragging these will let you lock onto an axis while being able to move the shape. The shortcut for the axis movement tool is W. The next tab is the object handle rotate, which lets you rotate objects. I'll let you into a little secret here. You can use the keyboard shortcuts to also rotate and snap to a 90 degree angle. The G and H shortcut lets you snap to the X axis, U and J snaps to the Y axis, and K and L snaps to the Z axis. To rotate manually, click on the handles and just drag in the direction you want. Next up, we have the object handle scale, which is probably one of my favorite tools. Once selected, you will have handles that you can click and drag to change the scale of objects. The scale tool lets you become extra creative. You think this is a vehicle you can drive? Think again, it's flat. Wide shark? No problem. But in all seriousness, you can distort simple primitives or prefabs to fit your imagination. It's powerful, and it's also on the R shortcut. The next button is view selection. It's pretty straightforward. After selecting an object, this button will then focus in on what you have selected. Its shortcut is F. Next up, we've got the clone selection tool. This will allow you to create an exact copy of the object you've selected. Here we've got a giraffe. Now we've got two. You can clone multiple objects by holding shift and clicking on the objects that you want to clone. Control D is the shortcut for this. Finally, we have the delete object button, which will delete the selected object or objects if you have multiple selected. If you've made a mistake, you can undo using Control Z or redo if you decide actually it was fine with Control Y. These icons are at the top are also undo and redo. But you're a shortcut pro now, right? There's a few other tools at the bottom left of the screen. First, when you have the object library tab selected, an icon will appear at the bottom which will let you view the map from the player's start point. This will let you see if you have the spawn point lined up correctly. By default, when you start map, you'll be on the fly edit camera mode, which we've already covered at the beginning. There is also another option to swap to a first person editing camera, which will let you run around and select objects like you're actually playing. The first person camera has its own set of shortcuts that you can see on the bottom left. Let's move on to the object inspector tab. This can also be selected by pressing number two. The object inspector tab lets you precisely change attributes of an object. Certain objects such as shapes also include a color picker. The inspector lets you give an ID to an object, change the XYZ position, rotation, and scale down to the individual number for extra precision. You can easily and uniformly scale objects and ensure correct alignment. We'll be covering the targets on the object inspector later in the video. 
The next tab is the terrain settings tab. This is another awesome tool which lets you raise and lower the plane, letting you create immersive mountains or anything else that captures your imagination. The terrain settings is broken down into separate tools. The first is to raise and lower the plane. You can change the size of the brush, the amount which is how aggressively it changes the plane, and you can also choose from a variety of brush textures. Next is paint height. This handy tool lets you match the height of an existing terrain so you can match it to the exact level. Simply click the read terrain paint height, sample an area of terrain you want to match the height, and paint. The next tool, smooth height, lets you round off jagged edges for a smoother terrain. If you increase the size of the brush, you'll be able to do more at once. And finally, we have the Edit Texture tab. This allows you to paint a different texture over your terrain. Click the Add New Paint Texture and then select from the list. The terrain settings are really great for bringing your map to life. You can create mountains and hills and anything else that hits your imagination. A smile for a job well done. The final tab on the right is the level settings. Here, we can add modifiers to our map. From the top, you can give a name to your map, change the skybox if you decided you're not calm anymore from the skybox golden, choose a starting weapon for the players, if the map is to be played in third person or first person, if the player can actually move or if it's static, make sure to give your player a walk speed and a run speed or you won't be going anywhere. The default walk speed is 20 and the default run speed is 25. You can change the task type to end by time or shooting a certain amount of targets. You can change the task length up to 300 seconds and on the bottom is a slider to change how intense the light is. Scrolling down, you'll also be able to change the direction of the light source along with adding color to it. Finally, you can render an icon of your map which will be used as a thumbnail. All right, the part you've all been waiting for. Let's talk about bots. And no, I'm not talking about some of your teammates. Targets can be added into Creator Studio and given different modifiers, which lets them do different things. This is the really exciting part that will bring your map to life. Under the object library, you'll have a drop down for targets. This is split into two categories for now, including spawners and waypoints. For starters, we'll look at spawners as the waypoint category requires one of the elements for it to work. All the spawners require a bot to operate. To start, we'll drag a point spawner onto the map. The object inspector will automatically open and you'll have a few options. We have an option to either load or add a new bot, a checkbox which is ticked by default letting it spawn the targets on start, and at the bottom there's a button called add modifier. To start, let's add our first bot. Click on new. This will then bring up a list of current bots available. This list will increase the more Creator Studio develops. The current bots available are Sphere, Cube, Capsule, Headshot, Humanoid, Target Man, and Disc. I'm going to be using the Headshot bot for the example. Once you click on the bot of your choice, you'll first want to give it a name as you can't save without one. You can add a description and an icon for your bot too. The hit points is how many times you need to shoot the target for it to destroy, so the value 1 will mean it will only take a single shot. On the left you have behavior modifiers that you can add to the bot. To add one, simply click and drag a behavior from the left below the hit points on the right. This will then apply that chosen modifier to the bot. For example, let's drag the jump behavior over. You'll instantly see the change that you've added and now the little guy has life. Every behavior has its own attributes which can be changed. For example, you have a minimum and a maximum power per jump, along with an interval time which sets how long the bot is stationary at the start before jumping. Here the minimum and maximum power has been changed to 8 and you can see the bot is just pretty much flying each time. Multiple behaviors can be added to the bots. Here I've introduced the strafer modifier along with the jump. Since this is just a beginner's guide, I won't be going into all the settings for each behavior, but we'll quickly take a look at what each does. Chasing makes the bot follow the player around the map. You can change the minimum and maximum distance of how close the bot gets. Similar to chasing, sphere makes the bot orbit around the player in a sphere motion. Forward and backwards makes the bot, well, go forward and backwards. The lookout behavior will make the target continually focus on the player. This is a great modifier combined with fireball shooter. No gravity will allow you to place a target up into the air. Once you take this off, of course the target will fall back down again. Strafer makes the bot strafe to each side. This will be a popular behavior because many games have players strafing. While vertical looks similar to jump, jump has a peak in which the energy runs out. Vertical is fast and more volatile and can switch direction quickly. Fireball shooter is an attacking behavior. The bot will fire a ball towards the player. You can modify the speed of the shot or how quickly the shots are fired. Crouch makes the target duck down. Scalar lets you adapt the default size of the targets. Scalar random will randomly and dynamically change your targets on the fly. Scalar Adaptive is really fun. If you're hitting targets consistently, the size of the target will decrease to make it harder, and if you're missing the target, it will adaptively increase. We've then got some life cycle modifications. On Death Respawn means that after you shoot the target, it will come back. Without it, the target will be permanently gone. Lifetime Despawn means the target will only stay up for a specified period of time. Health Regeneration lets the bot generate health over time. And finally, if there's any Time Crisis fans out there, you can add time on kills. That covers all of the behaviors for the bots. Next, we'll save our bot. This will then be applied to the point spawner we put in earlier. 
Spawner's behaviors can also be modified. Click on the add modifier button to show a list of what you can change. The first modifier is waypoint patrol. For this, we're gonna have to add some waypoints onto our map. Go to the object library and drag a few in. Now click the bottom of the point spawner to select it, add modifier and click on waypoint patrol. Where it says waypoint list, set this to three. This will then add elements below. Scroll down and we'll get the waypoints linked up. To link the waypoints, grab the visible name tag of them and drag them into each of the element boxes. And that's it, your bot will now patrol between each of the waypoints. It will visit element zero first and then so on. This will mean endless possibilities with bot pathing. Trigger spawners on kill lets you set off one or more other spawners in the map every time you score a kill on the spawner with the modifier. This is great for setting up sequences of targets or building out a gauntlet with multiple different bots on the same map. Next we have score modifier. It's split between on death, which means how many points you will gain for destroying a target, and on hit, which is just how many points for simply hitting the target. And finally, we have wave spawning. Wave spawning will allow for a couple of modifications. Firstly, you can set how many of the same bot will spawn at the point spawner. You can then also tick the box for multiple waves. You can set a duration and the same amount of bots will spawn after the time is up. We've now checked out bots, behaviors, and modifiers. Let's take a look at the other two spawners. First, we'll look at the area spawner. Drag the area spawner onto the map. You can then modify its size using the scale tool. Instead of targets spawning at a single point, targets can spawn at any location inside of the area. You can also choose to ignore the middle of the area spawner, meaning that targets will spawn around the outside. When you're happy with the shape and size, you can then either create a new bot, but I'm going to load our trusty headshot bot that we've used. The bot will then load inside of the area. You might find it difficult to see. I'm going to add a wave spawner modifier and add a few more of them. After you do this, there'll be plenty of targets to hit. They could even be your little fan club. You got this, woo! Finally, we have the waypoint spawner. Compared to the point spawner, the waypoint spawner will let targets dynamically change between waypoints or sequentially if you prefer. Think of the waypoint spawner as the command hub that will control the waypoint. Drag a waypoint spawner onto the map, then drag a few waypoints too. The waypoints will be the location where the targets will spawn. Now select the waypoint spawner to add attributes. First we'll link the waypoints. Set the amount of waypoints you have, then drag the names the same way you did for the waypoint patrol. This will then link the waypoints to the waypoint spawner, letting it become the central hub for any changes. After that, we'll load back our trusty headshot bot. And that's the basics of the waypoint spawner. You can then modify to add multiple targets spawning across waypoints amongst a bunch of other things. We've now covered bots, objects, level settings, tools, but what about, you know, actually playing? Let's cover the final options at the top of the screen. At the top left, we have the menu options for Creator Studio. From here, you can start a new map, return back to the editor, or quit to the main menu, but you're no quitter. Next, we have some information and shortcut controls. After that, we have the save button. Try and save as often as you can so you don't lose any work. Also, make sure to save each time before playing your map. From here, you can also upload your map to the workshop. Finally, we have the play button. Experience your creation in all its glory. You deserve it. You can keep going back into the editor and changing things up until you get it perfect. Finally, we have the content library. Here, all of your maps and bots are saved if you ever want to revisit them. The play icon will take you straight into a game, while the cog icon will load it back into the editor. You can edit your bots directly from here too. Congratulations, you've just graduated from the School of Basic Creator Studio Studies. You should now have enough information to be able to make your first map. Make sure to subscribe for more Creator Studio guides, join our Discord to discuss your builds, and follow us on Twitter at AimLab for some of the spiciest memes and best pro plays. I'm Bakir, and this has been the Beginner's Guide to the Creator Studio.